magazine on the stand you know, Soul Magazine. And, you know, I picked that up. And again, when I do anything, I do it wholeheartedly. So I was there every day on the day that Soul Magazine came out so that I could read about these folks that I was, I was listening to. And I remember when the news came out that Damon Harris had left the Temptations. And for me, it's like, you know, Kennedy's been assassinated or whatever. And I... <laughs> I was at the newsstand before, you know, Soul came out, because it's like, oh my God, what's happening here? My world is crumbling, my world is turning upside down. I sent a letter to Soul Magazine, uh, let's see, it's... 76, I must have been 17, 18 years old, something like that. And I sent a letter on spec, you know, please, I'd like to write for your magazine. I, I think it's a wonderful magazine. Here's a sample of my work. After six months, I said, well, I haven't heard from these people. You know, let me, you know, give them a call. I called up and I got Regina Jones on the phone. Somehow, I don't, I don't, know, how, don't know how that happened. And, you know, she says, well, sure, come on up and bring, you know, bring your, bring your sample. I'm like, oh, God. And I jump on a bus one, I remember it was raining cats and dogs. I got on the bus from SC to go up to 8271 Melrose, you know, Avenue. The editor then, Connie, was kind of, you know, poker face. But Regina, you know, there's, there is no poker face. And she said, she said something, you know, which was so sweet and so corny. It was, it was, it was something to the effect of the, we were sitting here on this, on this rainy day and here comes the sun in the form of Leonard Fitz. And I was like, oh my God, she just said, you know, Regina Jones just said this to me. When I started reading Soul, there were all these people who were like, you know, like godlike to me almost because they knew the stars and they talked to them, you know. I mean, that was huge to me. Steven Ivor, you know, I mean, like God. And I'm trying to write record, I'm trying to write my record reviews like Steve would. You know, and I go to the concerts, I'm trying to think, what would Steve say? What would Steve see in this concert? You know, there were just all these people that were, you know, that were, I had grown up, you know, not grown up the last few years reading, and suddenly, you know, I'm there. You know, I liked the fact that in Soul Magazine, you'd find out Rick James, you know, didn't like George Clinton. Nobody else was telling you, you know, this is why Felipe Wynn left the spinners. It wasn't what the press release said, it's because they had a fight. Soul was backstage at the entertainment industry. Soul was your ticket to places that you otherwise could not go. And Soul never neglected the business part of the business in terms of, you know, on stage politics and off stage politics, business in terms of, you know, how is the, 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 the concert, you know, the sound, the lighting, et cetera, et cetera. It gave you all that. That's the kind of stuff that you, that, that you saw in Soul magazine that you did not see you know, anywhere else. Soul presumed that you had a certain level of intelligence and sophistication and could deal with the world, the entertainment world, as it was. We're covering these people and we're going to these concerts and this is what we see. Good, bad, ugly. And guess what? People respected us for that. Somebody was holding, holding them to account. Somebody was saying, you know, that there's meaning to this and here's what we think it is. Rolling Stone was doing it for, for, for you know, for White Rock and et cetera, et cetera. But nobody really thought of black music in particular as being important enough to warrant that kind of attention to be taken seriously you know and seriously critiqued and seriously analyzed you know so I'm, I'm, I'm proud that we did that